Hello students, in this video, we are going to discuss about the anaerobic sludge digestion process. Now the sludge is basically a solid product which is obtained after the processing of the wastewater treatment and this sludge should be treated for further disposal. So major cost of the modern wastewater treatment facilities is basically associated with the solid processing, the thickening, the stabilization, dewatering and the disposal of the sludge. Now the solids which are removed from primary, advanced or the advanced stages of the treatment process and the thickening is generally employed to further concentrate the solids or sludge prior to the stabilization. Now uh, thickening may be accomplished by gravity thickening similar to that of sedimentation or by dissolved air flotation and many stabilization processes are also involved which includes uh, processes such as uh, aerobic digestion, uh, anaerobic sludge digestion as well as the composting process. Now let's start with the sludge. Okay, what is sludge? Sludge is some suitable solids separated from the liquids during the during the processing of the wastewater treatment. Now, which are the, what are the basic characteristics of a sludge? It may be organic or inorganic oxygen demand requirements, specific orders, nutrients, pathogens will be present in them and water. Now what is the purpose of the treatment? Okay, To stabilize the organics, eliminate odors, to destroy the pathogens, pathogens which are present should be killed, okay, should be killed okay and reduce the amount of solids and enhance the dewatering process now the basic process of the sludge digestion okay it's in primarily uh, a diagram of a primary wastewater treatment pretreatment where sludge which is received okay after secondary treatment the sludge is received okay and it is transferred to the it is transferred to the digester and digested sludge which is stabilized form okay which is in stabilized form and some of them part is is released as in the form of gas okay recycled water may be used okay from similar pattern now what are the types of treatment which includes heat and pressure heat and chemical okay lime stabilization biological digestion in this video, we'll mostly focus on biological digestion. Now, in the biological digestion process, where bacteria are basically involved, where in the under anaerobic conditions, oxygen is used, okay, and in anaerobic conditions, oxygen is not used. Now, in the case of aerobic digestion process, okay. In the case of aerobic digestion process, there are some exam uh, advantages and there are also some of the disadvantages also. Okay. Now the advantages is because effective for secondary sludge, simple in operation, no hazardous gas production occurs. But there are disadvantages which includes higher operating costs, high energy demands, no burnable gas and higher organic compound content or you can say whereas in the case of anaerobic digestion advantages includes low operating cost proven effectiveness in the processes of the anaerobic digestion burnable gases produced in this gas can be utilized okay for burning disadvantages long startup time affected by changes in loading and conditions 
and excessive gases also produce. Now, let's start with the anaerobic sludge digestion process. Anaerobic digestion process occurs in two stages, okay, or you can say two phases, okay. This does not mean there are two tanks which are involved, okay, two different tanks, but it is a two-stage process. It is a two-stage process, okay, in which, in which two types of bacteria are involved, okay, each relying on on the other and for example in the first stage in the first stage organic compound is converted into a simpler form and this simpler form is further more simply converted into more simpler forms okay for example in the first stage organic material is changed by acid forming bacteria to simpler organic material and this organic matter plus bacteria okay converts organic matter into organic acids in the first stage now the organic acids also are basically converted into volatile forms in the second where methane forming bacteria use organic acids okay and produce carbon dioxide and methane where organic acids and this type of bacteria convert organic acids into carbon dioxide and methane gas so both are released as the gases now it's in part of the second stage process now it's a continuous process two stage process okay it occurs simultaneously each are dependent on one another where organic organic matter in the presence of bacteria are converted into organic acid through acid forming bacteria and methane forming bacteria use organic acids to produce carbon dioxide and methane okay now in the second stage the stabilization occurs now what type of food may be present for bacteria okay what type of food may be present for the bacteria it may be organic no inorganic soluble or insoluble forms liquid okay for example in a liquid a cell membrane okay where a soluble organics are which are directly absorbed Okay, which are directly absorbed by means of enzymes by means of enzymes okay this is a basic process and acids are released and acids are released during the process okay and not all organic material is broken down okay please note down that not all organic materials are broken down so the poor food which is not readily degradable okay such a form of the inert solids example plastics are not degraded and almost 40 to 60 percent of the organics are reduced now again it's a two-stage process or two-phase process where two types of bacteria each relying on another so it's a continuous process and the process should be in balance should be in balance now if there is an imbalance the process would not complete okay for example in first stage volatile acids are produced during the acid phase and the acids are used at rate produced okay and acid used at rate produced if not used there will be drop in ph and if there is drop in ph start up upsets okay sore stuck methane for okay which it should be kept in mind at a point at this point of time methane formers must be active and the methane formers which are slow growers very sensitive to changes okay a loading ph temperature and digestion operation needs 
depends on maintaining proper environment for methane producers so there should be a balance okay for example very high amount of acid produced and there is a very low population of methane producers okay so it will deplete it will inhibit the growth of the it will inhibit the growth of methane producers because methane producers are very specific to their environment are very specific to their environment now the what are the products of the digestion okay gases okay 7 to 12 cubic feet per pound of volatile destroyed for example gases are methane carbon dioxide of which methane is almost 65 to 70 percent and the carbon dioxide is 30 to 35 percent where 500 to 600 BTU per cubic feet and can be utilized using heating digester, heating buildings, running engines, etc. Also as electric power. Now second one, scum, lighter solids, floating fr from gas entrapment, builds up if mixing is inadequate, adequate, okay, and if not digested and separated from bacteria. And also this scum reduces the digester capacity and plugs the piping plugs vents and flame traps okay so if the mixing is inadequate that leads to problems as a supernatant liquid that leaves the digester and two sources of water in the digester water pumped in and water formed during the digestion it is recycled through the treatment plant where high in solids BOD and ammonia now, the supernatant liquid that leaves the digester should be removed frequently in small quantities. At last, the digested sludge, okay, it's a final product which contains inorganic solids, volatile organic solids, not easily, which are not easily digested. And finally, the sludge is stabilized. Now, what are the characteristics? Of a well digested sludge it includes less amount of solids a lumpy a lumpy appearance black in color less objectionable order and volatile content is reduced and again so what are the products of the digestion gases which includes methane and carbon dioxide scum which includes lighter solids supernatant which which it's a liquid which is to be removed and at last the digested sludge which is stabilized now which are the factors which affects digestion bacteria present in it food loading content and the environment now bacteria they are naturally occurring ones must have enough living organisms two different types should be present and balance should be maintained and the other important factors because they affect the bacteria okay which includes food okay it contains volatile solids okay as i told you it does not include it does not break down all organic material okay almost 40 to 60 percent of the organics are reduced okay not all volatile material and none of the inorganic okay the loading which includes amount or you can say applied to the treatment process so it is related to the size of the system so how much amount should be used for for loading okay concentration of the solid sludge for example percent of total solids amount of usable sludge for example in case of percent volatile ones amount of volatile per volume available and volumes of sludge per volume available so it depends how much you can say quantity contact mixing mixing should be done properly okay mixing should be done properly okay because it connects bacteria with food it also distributes the heat throughout the system 
okay and minimizes the settling and reduces the available volume and minimizes scum also reduces the operational problems okay so finally mixing leads to contact heat distribution minimize settling minimize scum which leads to maximize digestion efficiency so bacteria leads to balance food volatile solids loading amount and type and contact through mixing and finally the environment the which includes the hyperbox you can say where methane forming bacteria which are sensitive to conditions in the digester okay and anaerobic conditions okay temperature should be maintained now what is the temperature requirement of the bacteria because temperature controls the activity of bacteria so uh, includes psychrophiles which includes psychrophiles temperatures 50 to 68 mesophilic includes 68 fahrenheit to 113 fahrenheit west 85 fahrenheit to 100 fahrenheit thermophilic range which in above 113 degree fahrenheit okay and best 120 fahrenheit to 135 fahrenheit of which mesophilic are the important ones which includes acid forming bacteria okay and most anaerobic digesters are operated in the mesophilic range and within the range the bacteria are very sensitive to temperature change okay so the temperature should not be allowed to change by more than one degree per day during the process of anaerobic digestion and for the methane farmers which are slow growers are very sensitive to changes loading ph in temperatures the digestive operation depends on maintaining the proper environment for methane farmers so again balance is needed so now what are the basic differences between aerobic and anaerobic digestion advantages include in the case of aerobic digestion are the effective for secondary sludge simpler operation no hazardous gas production in the case of anaerobic digestion low operating cost proven effectiveness burnable gas is produced disadvantages higher operating cost higher energy demands no burnable gas is produced and also contains higher organic content and disadvantages are long startup time which are affected by loading and variety of conditions and also explosive gas is produced so that's all uh, for an arabic sludge digestion process in the next video we'll discuss about the composting process.